heard um, Dave mention the uh, the dryness over northwest Texas and thinking that would have some influence on how far the dry line mixed to the east. And, and uh, John, I'll let you take over at this point to talk about these images. All right. Well, first, this interesting. This first plot is actually a climatology gene vegetation fraction, which is the fractional coverage of healthy vegetation that's evapotranspiring. But it's a climatology, and in fact, this is the default data set that's in the public wharf model. So I suspect this is going to be the same data set that's in all the CAPS ensembles as well. And so this is the depiction, the time interpolation of this monthly climatology to today's date. And so you can see you know, the high greenness and forests of the Ozarks, and then a steady decline off to the west where you get into the desert regions. So if you want to bring in the the next image now, the, the organization I work for is NASA Sport, and we take, a, we work with a lot of remote sensing data sets, and one of the products we've developed is a 0.01 degree resolution uh, MODIS green vegetation fraction that's updated every day as new swaths come in, mm -hmm. and we do an inverse time weighting on that, and we generate this over the whole CONUS. So what I did this morning was zoom into this region here, and this is the this is going to be yesterday's green vegetation fraction representation. And so, if you can remember, first of all, you see a lot more detail because it's high res modus as opposed to the coarse resolution climatology. And if you look at the depiction, you can see in northwest Texas there around Childress and Little South, <coughs> there's locally or regionally lower GVF values compared to what's depicted in the climatology and in fact and actually there's a swath from the East Texas Panhandle up toward say Woodward and to the maybe Eid that's relatively high GVF and Mike was speculating that's probably the winter wheat that's uh, you know doing pretty well out in that area so if you scroll down one more now you can see the difference image and in fact you can see the, the relatively lower fractions south of Childress there, and then a little bit higher differences between our product and the climatology in a couple of bands from one maybe correlated with the winter wheat, another one from maybe Norman Oak City up to southeast Kansas. So based on looking at this difference, then in reality what might happen is that the dry line could have a tendency to surge more quickly to the east, say, south of Altus, because of the fact that we're going to have uh, less healthy vegetation there, and so there'll be, the surface will probably heat up more quickly and the dry land will mix to the east faster in that region. So uh -huh. that's some of the speculation we, we uh, thought about by looking at this feature here. So back to you, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, quick question about your winter weed. Uh, it's three weeks of heaven trouble. They're even harvesting uh, winter wheat up into Kansas now this week. And I'm wondering if it's almost the reverse that around here it's all uh, non green, it's all headed out. And it's that, that's a so possibility. Uh, I hadn't looked to, at an actual, like a true color image to see what what might be depicted. But yeah. It, that's what I was asking because actually when you drive that yellow area up towards Wichita, basically you can always see the combine in the field. Oh, that's, that's so maybe it's actually the opposite of what I was explaining. That's what I was asking. Okay. Okay. That, that would make sense because that would shift it from the west to the north up to Union Ponca City where you see lower values that might correspond to you know, the winter wheat already being ready for harvest. Because so northwest Oklahoma probably is more just prairie, I think. So that might be well, just... I would chase up there. It could be. <laughs> the, the grasslands <laughs> definitely respond very quickly to rainfall. Uh, in fact, I was just reading some papers on that. So if there's been fairly recent rain in the last few weeks, then that could lead to, you know, a healthier response in the, the grasslands relative to what you would typically see climatologically. So but there's there's needless to say there's some interesting variations across the southern plains. And all this, if you plugged it into a, a NWP model, could it'll adjust the surface energy budget and the, and the models and 
So obviously where the GVF is lower, you'll have more surface heating and less uh, evaporative fluxes. This is a year where reality may be totally different than climate. Yep, and in fact, the last one to two years have been that. At least. Yeah. I mean, summer 2010, it was very green and lush because of all the early sea summer heavy rains in Texas. Then last year, last year we saw like a greater than 40% decline in the GVF product uh, compared to the previous year. So we're just like oscillating back and forth between the average value. Yep, and that, that appears what we've seen the last couple of years. For those of you who care, I just got an email. DC3 is a definite go uh, for Southwest Oklahoma today. So flight takes off from Salina at 3 p.m. for Southwest Oklahoma. So that's going to be a lot of soundings today. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that is that a resolution thing? I mean, because it's a higher resolution. Because uh, why would why would the pine forest up there be a lot greener than normal? Yeah, but that's greener than not necessarily green. It's just greener. It's green here. It's green. Yeah, it's green it's that's saying that it should be greener. It's greener than normal. It's showing about 60%. Yeah, I mean, this is relative to normal. I'm suspecting that. You know, when you get into the complex it's rained terrain, up yeah, it's it actually had storms in the last two weeks it, the in that out. area. I mean, yeah, it's, it's resolving it. The, the, the El Paso area has so had I'm more storm reports in the last two weeks than they usually get all year long. But what I, I guess what I'm asking is, is because that's so coarse, does and then you're taking a point, a hundred meter resolution oh, from it, are you creating an artificially high just because it's so much higher, because I, because that's almost all just pine trees. Yeah, Why would the pine trees be greener than? I suspect that the pixel size that what the satellite's able to resolve is is better in MODIS. So there's going to be some pixels that will be nearly saturated with greenness, whereas in this 0.15 degree resolution. Uh, 